Hi guys, in this video we're going to look at DNA and where it's found and in what form in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Uh, we're going to talk about DNA in general, uh, then we'll look at where it's found in eukaryotes and then we'll talk about prokaryotes. Uh, so firstly, DNA stands for deoxyribose nucleic acid, so that is a uh, chain that consists of nucleic acids held together by deoxyribose sugar and a phosphate backbone. Um, and it's the universal set of genetic code for all life. And what I mean by that is that all living things have their genetic code stored in the form of DNA. And there's a few different forms of that DNA, but all of them have DNA, this common molecule to all life. And interestingly, uh, of that DNA, there's actually only four bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. Um, so any living thing that you can think of uh, can be coded for using th just these four letters. So similarly to the English language, we have like every book you've ever read consists of 26 letters. Um, everything you've ever seen that is alive consists of just these four letters put together in different orders. Um, and every cell in, well, multicellular more importantly, but every cell contains all the genetic code for the organism. So in a multicellular organism, this means that every single cell in the body, whether it's a skin cell, a bone cell, a muscle cell, a blood cell, uh, all of these cells have the genetic code necessary to be any of the other cells. Um, so that's uh, something that's really cool as well. So we'll start off looking at eukaryotes. And there's two main places that we find DNA in eukaryotes. Uh, the main place that DNA is found is in the nucleus, and we call this the nucleic DNA, um, and this is in strands called chromosomes, uh, and these chromosomes uh, have a, a double helical structure as well, uh, so down at the DNA level, down here, those bases wrap around each other in a double helical structure, but then there's also this superstructure of them wrapping around proteins called histones into chromosomes, uh, and different Organisms have different amounts of chromosomes, um, and we have they set up in pairs called homologous chromosomes. Uh, and yeah, all different organisms have different amounts, and the amount that an organism has doesn't necessarily reflect um, how complex it is. So some complex things can, uh, well, we as humans have 23 pairs, but there's uh, organisms that aren't as complex as us that have more. Um, and that number of pairs, we call the N number. So in humans, 23 pairs, N equals 21. Um, in other organisms, that N number is different, and that's when our um, diploid and haploid comes into it. Uh, so those genes, uh, correction, the DNA contains genes, so sections of DNA on those chromosomes that code for proteins. And that's the main thing that DNA does. It codes for proteins, and those proteins is how their, our genetic tra traits are expressed. So whether that's a protein that produces a, a blue eye pigment or a brown eye pigment, um, that's how those genetic traits are expressed. Now, interestingly, um, of the chromosome, uh, almost half of it is protein that actually wraps it up, so only half of it is DNA. Um, and of that DNA, it's only about 3% that code for proteins. So that means that the vast majority of DNA in chromosomes is actually what we call non-coding DNA. We used to call this junk DNA, um, but we've found that it actually has um, well, some sort of role, uh, but we're not quite sure what role that is. Um, so some of its regulatory uh, sections, which tell um, a cell when to make a protein, um, and then some of the stuff we just still don't know what uh, it does. As well as in the nucleus, we also have DNA in our mitochondria. And it's not as much um, DNA as in the nucleus, and it is found, rather than being in these um, chromosomes, it's found in small rings. So still double helix, uh, but this double helix is in a ring. And it only codes for a few uh, proteins. And they are mainly the proteins that are involved in producing enzymes that are used in the mitochondria, as well as producing uh, the proteins that make up ribosomes. And we'll talk about um, in a later video about how ribosomes um, make proteins and why they're important. Uh, the 
Mitochondrial DNA is really important in phylogenetics, so that's looking at um, how closely related things are to each other and when they split from each other. Um, this is because it's small, it's easy to sequence, um, and you only get it from your mother. So because the sperm has basically the nucleic material but nothing else, the egg is a much bigger cell, uh, which contains all the rest of the bits for the cell, so all the other organelles, including the mitochondria. The DNA in your mitochondria is exactly the same as the DNA in your mother's mitochondria. Or when I say exactly the same, the other cool thing that we can do with it is it actually mutates, so it has natural mutations that occur at about 20 times that of cellular DNA. And unlike that cellular DNA, there aren't uh, these checker proteins that go and make sure that mutations don't occur. So we've got a consistent number of mutations and they're not being fixed. So we can actually have a look at the mutations between uh, different sets of mitochondrial DNA and work out exactly where they had a common female ancestor. So going on to prokaryotes, prokaryotes also have um, two sets of DNA. They've got their chromosomal DNA. Um, and when, remember that prokaryote means before the envelope. They don't have nuclear-bound organelles. So they don't have a nucleus. They don't have mitochondria. So their main coding DNA uh, that codes for most of the proteins that keep that uh, prokaryote alive uh, is found in this chromosomal DNA. So this chromosomal DNA is found as a double-stranded piece of DNA. So it's got two single strands um, together, and they are wrapped around each other uh, and circular. So they join end to end. Now, it's not uh, wrapped around in a helical structure like the uh, in eukaryotes, um, but it is wrapped around each other and kept together. And then there's a superstructure that goes with that as well. Another place that DNA is found in prokaryotes is in these uh, circular formations of DNA called plasmids. Now these plasmids are smaller than the chromosomal DNA and they contain extra pieces of DNA that code for extra proteins. Now a lot of these proteins are associated with um, uh, outlasting for survival. So they're mutations that have come across um, uh, as part of that uh, evolution. Uh, and these can be passed from one uh, prokaryote to another prokaryote in horizontal gene transfer. So a plasmid from one prokaryote that has a mutation that, for example, makes it uh, resistant to antibiotics can actually bump up against another prokaryote and inject this plasmid into them. And then that other prokaryote becomes resistant to that antibiotic as well. So these are much smaller, much simpler, but also very important uh, pieces of DNA in prokaryotes. In this video, we've talked about deoxyribose nucleic acid, the genetic code that is universal to all life. We've talked about where DNA is found in eukaryotes, being chromosomal DNA in the nucleus, as well as mitochondrial DNA in the mitochondria. And we've talked about the DNA in prokaryotes being the chromosomal DNA in, uh, that's floating around uh, and the plasmids, these circles of DNA that can be transferred. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.